Welcome to Our Star Speak. My name is Christina Miner. I'm the host of this podcast. And today we have Vanessa Cook. Vanessa is someone that I met through Stand Tall and I think Not Putting on a Shirt, two organizations that surround beautiful women who are flat and even men um, can join these organizations. And she is also flat as well as myself. So we, I was in this these organizations with her and I seen the last name and I was like, how ironic it would be if she was married to someone who I went to high school with, with the last name. And sure enough, she was, <laughs> she was. Um, so Vanessa, I'm excited to have you on to be able to tell your story. And yeah, it's, it's just such a small world, even in breast cancer world over here in the community that you actually went to school with someone who I graduated with, who's very, very just awesome guy, awesome guy. But thank you for coming on to Our Scar Speak tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. <laughs> you are so welcome. So that being said, we can go ahead and get started. And the first question is always, who is Vanessa? I know that you do a plethora of things. I know a few things about you, but who is Vanessa the person? What was something that you want to share with the audience about you? Who are you? Um, I don't know. I'm just a big family person, uh, a wife. I have two wonderful children. Um, I'm a Christian. I'm a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I love to create stuff, um, um, gardening, all kinds of different things. Um, okay. um, that's not, not, not <laughs> too exciting. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know I can tell by like your pictures and stuff, like you're really, like you're really into your family, like your yeah. family that seems yep. to be yep. absolutely yep. world to you. Yes. Um, so obviously we're up here about breast cancer, but I always like to know, even the audience, because we like to know who the person is, not just because, you know, a lot of times people ask us like, how was life when you found out or when you found the lump? And it's like, look, that's not who I am completely. Yeah. Like I had a whole life before this happened to me. So if you could kind of tell us like, what exactly was life like for you before breast cancer, you go know, as far back as you like, or as early close to it, however you want to do it, but how was life going for you before you even discovered anything? Yeah, sure. Um, so, um, I had a career, I was, um, you know, accountant at a university and, I uh, was, um, like team mom for baseball and, you know, it was going real good and, um, just busy, busy, busy. So, um, but I was having some issues, um, I had chronic migraines really, really bad. Um, and they're like hemiplegic where they show like, um, stroke-like symptoms. So okay. it's pretty scary, but, and I actually had to quit working due to that. Really? So, yeah, I did. And um, you had that all your life or was that something that just? No, it was something that just developed later, but uh, I've found out that it, it's genetic and, and my brother actually had an episode too. So it, it's really strange. But um, so I had to step away from working and um, thank goodness I was able to, you know, my my wonderful husband, <laughs> he, he, I mean, he's just so awesome in my rock. And um so in doing that, you know, I decided I was going to, you know, you know, sometimes as moms or parents, you know, we put ourselves to the back burner and we don't take care of ourselves. So um, I decided, you know, I was going to really try to give back on um, my wellness and everything. So, um, so this was a year before I was diagnosed, I was diagnosed in 2019. And, you know, I set up my well check, I was 41, I hadn't got my mammogram yet. So I was setting that up. Oh, that's right. All that. yeah. so, um, so that was what was going on before. And then um, I don't know if you want to no, so, so that was okay. So what year you got diagnosed 2019, you said? Yeah, and I stopped working in 2018. So Okay. And that was due to the migraines that you yeah, had. Yeah. Okay. And so yeah. And so then you were just kind of get going down your checklist. Like, yeah. And, and my migraines had gotten better, you know, oh, I was okay. looking, uh, it was very high stress, uh, job and, you know, I was looking at huge screens all day and, and they greatly 
you know, improved the, a lot of the triggers. And so I, I thought it's such so getting better. <laughs> it's right. So, right. Um, you know, it was nice. I had more time, you know, with my son at home and being able to uh, do other things with him. And my, and my daughter was in college and everything too. So I was hoping, you know, her, her adjust to all that and everything too. So that was kind of perfect timing in a way. So yeah. you, were, you say you're 41 when this happened? 41. Uh, yeah, 41 in 2019. Yeah. So, okay. so I had set up my baseline mammogram and I, um, this was in April. Okay. And I, went and I had a 3D mammogram and, you know, I went home. They called me the next day and <laughs> I was like, oh, did we need you to come in. We saw some stuff for some additional, um, you know, screening. I said, okay. So I came in and I had got the 3D mammogram and then okay. they did another mammogram on both sides and they also did ultrasound mm. on both sides. And, you know, the, the radiologist, he came and talked to me and gave me the whole spiel and he's like, the welcome to mammography and, you know, um, we think these are just some, you know, benign cysts, nothing to worry about, you're fine. I was like, oh, you know, <laughs> like you're free. Wow experience you know I was just freaking out so you fast forward to um the end of June and I'm having some issues um I'm having like pinching sensations mm -hmm. um you know one's kind of always a little bigger than the other one right. was getting like really noticeably bigger and then my nipple started inverting mm -hmm. I'm like you know, what's going on? I just had this two months ago, you know, what's going on? So I said, you know, I, I talked to my husband and I'm like, yeah, I need to go get this checked out. So I went to my primary and she was so sweet. And she's like, well, I mean, I could feel, I could feel something, but it was just like right under there. So it's really deep and it's hard to feel. So she's like, I feel something, but you know, I'm no expert. She's like, they got you so scared, you know, that, and you just don't believe what they say, but we're going to get this figured out. And she right. sent me to, you know, uh, a breast specialist. Okay. That's my hero. <laughs> so yeah. um, he 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 found it and he looked under understone and he, it was hard to see though because I have really dense breast tissue. Yeah. So we got uh, he saw, he um, got me um, for the biopsy mm -hmm. really quick, and then. Um, called me back you know a couple of days later and I was like yeah you have a type of breast cancer I was just like really wow. <laughs> what type of breast cancer did you have yeah so I was diagnosed with um IDC invasive ductal carcinoma and um he set me up for MRI so we could see you know what was going on right and um he wanted to get it done, you know, as soon as possible. And the funny thing is he was going on a cruise. <laughs> oh, wow. So he was coordinating this while, cause he's like, you know, I don't foresee this, but you know, depending on what it says, we might be having you go talk to the oncologist mm -hmm. or, you know, and we had a big Disney uh, trip planned and everything. And, um, it was, um, I was like, oh, should I cancel? They're like, no, you might be done with this by then, you know, and everything. So, so his nurse calls me, JD, she's my, she's just an angel. And she's like, I could just hear it in her voice. And so the mass was almost six centimeters. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, um, it's just crazy to me that I just couldn't see it two months ago, but, um, yeah, it was six centimeters. And so, um, and by then the, the pathology had came back and everything. So uh, the, they diagnosed me with stage 2B and it was, it was like a, a grade two, it was ER positive and they wanted to start me on chemo immediately, um, to shrink it down. So, um, I have a question for you. Yeah. So going backwards, did your, did you have any family history? No family having, history. No, and, no family history. And what about the genetic testing? Was it positive yeah. or negative? Yeah. So since I was 41 mm -hmm. 
it, it was just such a whirlwind. I mean, like, I right. mean, crazy. Um, so because I was for one in the same time period, you know, they had me go meet with a genetic counselor and, um, they said, you know, because you're younger, you know, we want to see if you have a, a genetic mutation. So, you know, I did that test and I came back and she's like, well, yeah, you, you got the one. I was like, oh, so you that. did have the, you did have a gene. Yeah. Uh, I, I ended up having um, the BRCA1 gene mutation, which, you know, it's, it's like your defense against breast cancer, ovarian cancer, uh, and there's gaps in it. So okay. it, you know, it, uh, it makes you more likely like astronomically. So like a regular person's lifetime risk of breast cancer is like 12%. Mm -hmm. uh, with this gene, it's like 65 to 85. Wow. And then ovarian cancer, a regular person's like one something percent and it's 40 something percent. So um, that was a lot to chew on. And then not only for me, because, you know, you're dealing with the breast cancer thing and they're like, you know, um, but that your family. Take, you take your time. Take your time. It's okay. It's okay. That's not hurt for me. Sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's okay. You're you're speaking of things that is real mm -hmm. and it's raw. And sometimes we think, okay, we can share, and then we get choked up. Like you're, I'm tearing up because you're, and, that, and I don't care. I cry anytime. It don't even matter to one. <laughs> I really don't. But when it comes to other people, I'm like such an empath, empath you know. And it's my family, oh. so. Yeah, that was your family. And that I think that's a lot with what we think about when we hear these things, like when we hear about what stage we are, or even just that we have cancer. Yeah. Like the first thoughts that pop through our head, how long do I have mm -hmm. along with my children? Yeah. And telling your kids, oh, yeah. that was just, that was just the worst. So, yeah. so that's, that's, you have every right to feel how you feel right now, even right now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so, um, so it's a 50, 50% chance that someone in your family is going to carry it. So uh, oddly enough, my aunt got diagnosed a couple months after I did, um, with breast cancer on my father's side. And, um, so my mother went and got tested, um, my brother, my sister, my daughter, and my aunt. And yeah. I just remember us. Um, well, three of us, uh, four of us went in a room to go get the results and we're all just sitting there and nobody else had it. <laughs> wow. It was just amazing. So, wow. so, you know, my son will have to get tested. You I know, was about to say, make sure they, yeah, so. make sure they check him too, because so many people don't think, some people still don't think men can, and they well, can't. And you could be a carrier too, you know, and then, then like you said, yeah, men and it, it increases um, the rate of prostate cancer for men too. So um, that's right. Cause you got the, the actual gene for that. Yeah. So yeah, that was, that, that was, uh, it's been a difficult part of the journey. So, um, so I did all that and in the meanwhile, they're, they're setting me up and saying, you know, you got to meet with the oncologist and they're like, okay, we're going to bring you in next week to get your port put in. I'm like, hold on. What is, I don't even know what any of this is or anything, you know? And, um, yeah, uh, I think I had, um, the first chemo, like right, right before my 42nd birthday. I don't remember if it was something like that, but it was, it was just wild. So, um, I had the 16 rounds, wow. the, the, the red devil and, um, and, and then the taxol and, and you still feel effects from it to today, you know, um, Did they, it, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> you're fine. Um, so when you went through this, 
did you have, I know you had, I know your family's supportive. Most of our families, you know, are supportive. There are some people, unfortunately, do not have that support, but mm-hmm. you, I know you did. I know. Um, yes, I did. But, but I heard you say something that I hear a lot of us say, I don't even know what that is. And it's like, they're speed racing you through. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and did you at that point end up having support bars, as as like support groups and stuff, or did that come later? That like, came later for me, okay. actually. Yeah. So you just kind of went in this kind of blind and not knowing. I mean, you knew what they told you, but you didn't know. I mean, anything. I went on websites and read stuff like breastcancer.org and different places like that and read that. But yeah, I really didn't get into the groups until um, I guess after my double mastectomy. So, okay. um, so you didn't have any support as far as people who had already gone through what you had gone through. Um. Um, I, ha- I have a friend, she had um, breast cancer. She had a, a lump duct, lump duct, lump duct in me. Yeah. And see, um, even that, it's like, it's such good support. Like we all, yeah. we all got mm-hmm. different diagnoses. But then when you start getting to the part where you get ready to share, I'm sure about your double mastectomy, it's just, I don't know. It, everybody's story is different. Like yeah. some of us have complications, some of us don't. But to have certain people who are flat and can understand that perspective or people who've gone through chemo or radiation. I haven't gone through chemo or radiation, so I can't even imagine what that is like. Um, But it's like each thing that we go through, it's like we also have these other, I don't want to say subgroups, but we have different people within our groups. You know what I'm saying? Like that kind of thing. Yeah, like I can relate to you because you're flat, but I cannot relate to you because of anything else, even your staging. Um, so I was just wondering, like, because that had to have been a lot, because we do rely on, they say, don't Google, but it's like, you're telling us all this stuff. We don't know where else to go. So some doctors will give you certain, you know, legitimate websites to go. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Research. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Wow. So you got the, you got, you did the treatment first. Yeah, we did the treatment first to, um, shrink the mask because it was, I mean, just straight back, you know, and it was almost to the skin and, um, yeah, it it was going to be too dangerous. They wanted to, you know, shrink it first. So that was, that was the goal. So So. it was straight back, like towards your chest, towards your bone or towards, towards the front of your breast. Towards the back. I mean, it was right under the nipple and then straight back. Oh, okay. Okay. I heard you say something about the skin. So I didn't know if it was like closer to the front. Okay. Yeah, it was right up there and then went straight back. Yeah, so it, it, it was. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's right. Because you said it was six centimeters. Six centimeters. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and, okay. and, and I did have him. I had him. I just couldn't understand. I was like, can you please bring up those tests I from in yeah, April? I, I said, I just don't understand how all that was missed. And when he brought it up, it's just white fuzz. That's all you could see. I mean, but didn't they do an bed. ultrasound? Mm-hmm. They couldn't yeah. see it on the ultrasound. I, he said they were doing it on the lower part of where they weren't looking where it was. Because I did have some other, you know, smaller benign cysts or whatever. So, yeah, I yeah. I, I just wish we could do something better for. That. That's the scary part of it. And people don't understand. It's like every test, ultrasounds are great. Of course, um, uh, mammograms, excellent 3Ds, but it's sort of like certain ones or positioning, you can miss things. That's right. That's right. Uh, and that's why it's it's a compilation of, you know, you can't put your faith off all in this technology and everything, you have to know your body and you have to trust your instincts. And if something's not right, you need to act on that, you know? Yeah. Because and I, I, I can could very easily, you know, said I'm fine. You know, they thought I was fine and I might be in a different place right now. So. Because honestly, had you not gone back after you had those symptoms of the inverted nipples and then one breast becoming larger than the other, you probably wouldn't have gone back yeah. at all. Right. He didn't have any other you know, reason to, because they told you everything was great. And that, that even with biopsies, I I talk to people all the time, like, look, you still, even if the biopsy comes back benign and they say you're fine, yet you're still having pain or you're finding lumps, go back. 
go right. to church, get a second opinion because I was benign and I demanded them to find out these answers. But what happened was because it's little pieces of tissue that they take. Right. So They're not have, taking the whole thing. Yeah. Right. If you have a tumor that big then if they only snip right here but the cancer's in there they're going to miss it or they can go through it my doctor was saying sometimes they miss it that way too so with you now I understand because you did say there was like a whole bunch of cysts and they probably were concentrated on those cysts versus what was also hiding there yeah so yep. wow so well at least you found out what happened because I, I would have been concerned too like let's yeah let's backtrack and see if it was there prior to that so you go through the chemo, you go through the radiation, and then you have surgery? Or No, I didn't. Um, I had the surgery after, um, after um, the chemo. Because okay. um, it, it um, shrank. And then, um, yeah, I had the double mastectomy in January, right before COVID hit. Um, and... Um, once the pathology came back and they told me I had a complete response, there was nothing left. So, really? I mean, yeah, it, it did its job. So, wow. um, and, um, I was supposed to get radiation, um, but we consulted with the Mayo Clinic and other people and we just couldn't improve upon my recurrence rate. So there was more risk for me to go through all that. Um, so we decided not to do the radiation. Okay. But your staging didn't change after pathology. Cause I know sometimes it can. So you were still um, stage two B after pathology. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there was nothing left of it. So, okay. so you yeah. just went off what they had. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you a question for, I want to ask you two questions, but I'm going to start with the chemo question first. Yeah. How did chemo, like while you were in the midst of taking chemo, did you have any type of really bad side effects. I know everybody's story is different. I've heard some people were on certain things, their hair, I don't know what they were on, but like maybe their hair didn't completely fall out. Or some people said that they didn't get as sick on chemo as they did. They were worse off on radiation. So what was your story with chemotherapy for you when you were taking it? Um, well, I lost all my hair. <laughs> Uh, no eyebrows, no eyelashes, and the, you know, arm hair, everything. Um, I also, it, it affected my nails really bad. Um, my nails are still lifting up real bad. Um, uh, uh, I'm probably going to have to get my toenails removed this year because they just, the ones lifted up and other ones grew under it. And, and so that, that's problems. The Taxol, I got peripheral neuropathy um, issues. Yeah. Um, it's improved a lot, a lot. Um, but, um, I still have a little bit of issues yeah. with it, but, um, um, I, it came up with hard. Um, the first four were, were really hard because they would send you home, you know, with, uh, I think it was new less done or something. It'd be this little thing they'd put on you and it, it was to help build up like your white blood cells and everything. Um, and it, it would be on a timer and it just inject into you. And after that, you just felt like you had the flu. So like every two weeks is like, you're going to have the flu. Um, so, and, and then the tax all wasn't as bad, but mm -hmm. it just all starts compiling and, um, you know, but you just, try to do your day to day, keep your routine and, um, and, and celebrate each little, you know, uh, win, um, and, and just keep going <laughs> and, 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 uh, I mean, and it did what it did, but I mean, it, it kills good stuff and the bad stuff, unfortunately, but. Right. Cause uh, so many people, I guess, there's different types. Well, I know there's different types of chemo and I know I've heard different stories, heard a lot of stories about the red devil, um, a lot, yeah. but I was just wondering what your experience was with that. Cause I did talk to someone not too long ago and they said that the radiation was worse than red devil for them. And so I was like, oh, wow. But I was also curious, I know that you're flat, but did, was that your decision or were you trying to get reconstruction first? Um, well, um, 
I was fortunate having the chemo first because it gave me more time to you know muddle over what I wanted to do and you know I'm a seeker of knowledge <laughs> I'm looking all the things so I you know I was all over the internet and you know I saw different options and everything you know I did go meet with the plastic surgeon um and he kind of just <laughs> confirmed that I wanted to be flat because, you know, he's talking to me and he's telling me all these options, you know, the flap. Um, I don't even think he offered implants to me to tell Oh, really? I don't think so. Um, and he's telling me how I'm going to have to stay in ICU for this many days. And oh, for the I'm like, yeah. I'm yeah. like, um, he said, and our goal is to make you look good in clothes. I was like, my goal is to become healthy and get rid of this cancer. <laughs> He's like, oh yeah, yeah. Like, okay. well, All right. I think, we're, I think we're done here. I think we're done here. So, um, so part of the reason that I decided to go flat was because having the breaker one, I also had to get a full hysterectomy. Um, so I knew I had more surgery, you know, on the horizon and, you know, just the idea of having additional surgeries and risks of infection. And, you know, I've heard about implants and different things It it just didn't appeal to me. So um, I just chose to go flat and I'm, I'm a little happy with it. I was able to, you know, get back to daily life much quicker and healthier. And Good. Yeah. Um, I didn't know that part. I, I couldn't remember. I, you probably did tell me, but I was like, oh God, did she go through complications? Did was it her decision? Was she offered? So it's good to hear that that you made your decision before, like you pretty much had your mom made up it sound like before you even went to go see the man. Um well, yeah, well, my breast surgeon is the one that did the surgery. Okay. The last sur surgeon was the person I had consulted with. But yeah, my breast okay. surgeon and he honored what I and I just kept asking him like nothing nothing extra you know flat this and that and everything and he, and he did stood perfectly <laughs> and he did like this he did the whole aesthetic flat closure for you he did and in like maybe a couple months later that's when you know it was recognized as a yeah. you know, uh, official yeah thing. So, uh, that was great to see absolutely so after treatment and everything I guess we're now at the now stage like I like to I like to say now in life um so you've had your treatments are you still on any form of medication still yeah I, I, I I'm on you part ER excuse me ER positive estrogen positive so um so that was another reason that getting the hysterectomy was also beneficial um to reduce my estrogen I think it was 90 percent estrogen positive and um and I have to be on the, um, I can never say that word, right? And I chose inhibitor. Uh, I'm on an astrazole for 10 years. Okay. Okay. Cause I was yeah, like, so I'm going it, and then there's one that I can never pronounce and that's the one. So yeah, well, I was on tamoxifen before the, uh, hysterectomy. And then once that, cause you know, as soon as you walk out of there, you're menopause, full blown menopause and, uh, they switch you to, um, this anastrozole so you know I take that for I have to take it for 10 years um because he said I was still you know high risk um I guess with my gene mutation and then the right. stage. so let me ask you a question because I'm you got me thinking now um because I've had a hysterectomy but I still have my ovaries you know we already had a conversation about all that <laughs> off camera but you got me thinking because you do not have your ovaries or anything, but you're still, I guess you're not really, are you still classified as high risk and have to go back for a pap every year or no? Um, yeah, he, um, my gynecologist still has me coming back. I'm still going to the oncologist and the breast surgeon every six months. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm still. So you're going to the breast surgeon every six months and then you're going to the gynecologist how often? Oh, just once a year. And then the oncologist every six months as well. Did he say for how long you would have to go see him for the rest of your life or for like 20 years? The gynecologist? Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think he, I think he just said, I keep seeing him. 
Yeah. Okay. So the reason why I had surgeon too. Yeah. The reason I had asked, the reason why you just sparked a question in my mind, because I wanted people to know, like, for instance, I have my ovaries and stuff, but when I thought the other day, I was like, dang, I've been dealing with the cancer word since, um, my teens, I had pre-cancer in my teens oh. and because of that. So, you know, HPV and stuff like that, but they haven't been able to find that. So they were like, we don't know if you ever really had that. <laughs> so that's why they thought I had a mutation. Um, but the point that I'm trying to make is that because I've had a hysterectomy, I thought, because I don't know if you know, you probably noticed too, back in the day, you used to be get a hysterectomy and you didn't have to do pap. Right, right. But a lot of people don't understand that if you have a hysterectomy, now I know without ovaries too, but even with ovaries and everything else is taken out, but you've had a leak procedure, or I think it's called a uh, cone or something. If you've had those procedures, that meant that you had high levels of precancerous cells. So they want to still see you after your hysterectomy 20 years after hmm. 10, but then they found out, I thought I was good to go 2023. I'm done with it. Would have been nice. Huh? <laughs> and she said, no, ma'am, you got 10 more years. <laughs> I was like, what? And she was like, they did um, studies and research that hmm. I guess there was a high level of people having recurrences or something. Wow. Um, so they extended it out, but I'm glad you said that because it really made me think, shucks, let me ask her, even though she has everything taken out, does she still have to see her GYN? Because a lot of people do not know this information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. That, thank you for sharing that. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay. So here you are fast forward. How did you meet the organizations you're a part of now? Oh, let's see. Um, you know, after going flat and everything and everything slowed down, mm -hmm. <laughs> like take the time to make some connections and talk to people. And um, so I joined some face groups, uh, Facebook groups and met just the most incredible people. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, just the most incredible people. and. Um, Uh, I did a, a walk, let's see, 2021, I did making strides against breast, breast cancer walk, and um, that's when the Stantall AFC had kicked off, and uh, I just thought it was awesome, um, and, and um, we did it again last year, and this year I had the opportunity to actually, you know, help the organization and we're working with ambassadors um, to get teams yeah. um, to walk at these breast cancer walks and give visibility to aesthetic fat closure and uh, and make people know that I mean let people know that it, it's a great choice it's a healthy choice and you know we're all women women still and we're beautiful and we're happy and people should have that option if they want to and it should be honored if mm -hmm. they choose that so um and and it's just a great organization <laughs> Renee and Stacy started and and uh, just have yeah. I don't know it's just so many great people that I've met uh just lasting friendships are you know because like you said I, I mean, our journey's not be, might not be the same, but there's definitely some shared struggles and that people can understand better than others. So, and you definitely have a following, girl. I seen today, like <laughs> I seen where people were like, even now, we love you, we love you, like they love you. Okay, they love you. Love you very much, though. And you're just lovable though. You're just so lovable. But um, but yeah, and you're just you're just an overall sweet person. And it, it proves because when you have people that are sharing to the world, like I'm gonna watch tonight, they're sharing, you know, about when it's gonna come on so they can see you and support you. They mm -hmm. are supporting you tonight. So that says a lot about who you are. Mm -hmm. Um, a whole lot. And is there anything else that you want to share about? Um, since you're not going to mention it, I'll mention it. 
Oh, wow. <laughs> so you talk about staying tall. Yeah. Which you did elaborate on that. And so tell me exactly what is your role in staying tall? I know you said helping with, but is it, do you oh, have Yeah, I'm on the community uh, relations team. And um, we just work uh, with, with the ambassadors to um, help, you know, um, them getting their teams together for their walks. Cause I mean, it's a lot. Some of them have, I mean, we have almost, uh, we have over 40 walks this year. <laughs> so um, yeah. And some of them have a lot of people and, you know, it's uh, flatties and their family members and supporters and it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. So if anybody wanted to get in contact, um, I'm going to get to you in a minute, but if it, cause I still got something else I want to share because you didn't mention it, but, if, but, um, it's nothing bad, but, uh, <laughs> far as if someone wanted to get in contact with like Stan tall or you pertain to Stan tall, is there a way they can contact you all? Yeah. The website, um, yeah, Stan tall, um, uh, dot org and Stan tall dot org and, um, and we're under the umbrella of not putting on a shirt. So you can find us through there too. And um, I'll be posting a lot of stuff soon. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. Because it's not Stand Tall Aesthetic Black Closure on the website. is Stand Tall AFC. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, so, okay, Miss Vanessa, <laughs> I know that you do something too. That's a part of your life. What what could that be that you're missing to tell everybody what you do? Yeah, uh, well, never in a million years would I thought I would have my own little business. But <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, uh, yeah, I guess it's been what two years now. Um, when I was going through chemo, um, like I said, I lost all my hair, eyebrows, eyelashes. You just don't know how much eyebrows do for you, okay? <laughs> oh, actually, I've been paying attention to certain businesses that put eye eyelashes and eyebrows, and all, and I'm like, whoa! That is <laughs> like, <amazing."> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like looking in the mirror, and sometimes you know it was hard to recognize yourself, and you know, but I would draw my little eyebrows on, and I've always like jewelry and you know statement jewelry and everything so I put my necklace on my big earrings and then I just felt better and you know it just made the day better and so um I saw you know it was a lot of downtime COVID all that <laughs> uh, I saw people were making uh, jewelry out of polymer clay and I actually worked with polymer clay when I was younger my 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 wonderful grandparents um they made all um, their daughters and their granddaughters these wonderful dollhouses. And um, I used to make little miniatures for my dollhouse, a little food and all kinds of stuff. So <laughs> out of the polymer clay. So I saw that, I said, oh, wow, I can make jewelry too. <laughs> Let me try that. So I was doing it and I just wanted to make something that people could wear and it might invoke, you know, some joy, some kind of feeling like it did for me. So, so I created beautiful. joyful clay accessories. That's so beautiful. And she's still doing it guys. She's so humble, but I'm just going to share her business right now. And, uh, <laughs> but it's called joyful clay accessories, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is so cute. But she's well, my middle so name is joy too, by the way. Oh, okay. No wonder. <laughs> Okay, I was wondering, I was like, I wonder if she's based this off her personality because she has such a joyful <laughs> personality. But now it makes sense, it's your middle name. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so they can yeah. find you. Do you want yeah. them to find you? If so, let them know where, where to find you as far as that. Yeah, I have a website and then I'm also on Instagram and Facebook. It's, it's Joyful Clay Accessories. Um, uh, it's a square. Um website so but the website's linked on the um social media sites too but um I just made different things some fun stuff some goofy stuff some some pretty stuff um yeah because Debbie has the flamingos right <laughs> yes yes, yes. so Debbie is a friend of ours and Debbie I mean, is that's just, the best 
<laughs> awesome, awesome. Hopefully she'll come up here one day. But Debbie is just awesome. And when I met Debbie, I want to say Debbie had some of your earrings on when I met her or either I see them online. I can't remember. But I know they are so beautiful. Like she loves your jewelry. She <laughs> jewelry. And I want to say she did, she did have some the time that I seen her. Yeah. And um, somebody... Um, my um I had somebody purchase one for actually um a sister uh, lost um her sister to breast cancer the flamingos too and she had loved flamingos and it was just things like that you know that it's like oh the this is why I'm doing it so part of your purpose yeah yeah so let me ask you a question the ones you have on tonight yeah are those yours yes you made them Okay, so, well, sorry, podcast, you can't see it. But if you go to YouTube, you can, see, you can see it or you can see it on Facebook. Those are beautiful. They're butterflies. Yeah. Those are pretty. I like them. And, oh, you all will see some of, you will see something. We can't share what, but <laughs> something that she did make that I asked. And um, we kind of collaborated a little bit on that little project. And I will be showing it as soon as I can release it and show it once yeah the person receives it <laughs> but yeah um but I just wanted to share I just want to make sure you put that out there thank you so, <laughs> <the worst. laughs> I definitely want you to put that out there because your jury is beautiful it's beautiful um very so, therapeutic too <laughs> yeah I can tell when you were just even talking about it like how much it meant to you and also not just how much it meant to you, but the people who you're giving, you know, who you're, who's purchasing, purchasing it from you. Yeah. And it's just like so impactful for you. It's like, you can tell, you can tell when people do things out of their heart. And when people are just like, just trying to make a dollar and mm -hmm. could care less about it. Like when you have that passion involved, it makes it just even more special. Mm -hmm. um, so you had a song. Was well, there anything else that you would like to share about your journey? or anything um oh you're on mute oh what? okay go ahead now I can hear you I said <laughs> we just found out the other day we're gonna be grandparents oh, awesome look I'm getting hot tea on um our stuff <laughs> <laughs> that is so awesome yeah, so wow okay. so it's your first grandbaby yes Yes. Joe is going to be a grandfather. Oh my gosh. Papa Joe. Yeah. Joe, Papa Joe, I said hello. <laughs> no, I will. Oh my gosh. I haven't <laughs> seen him since we graduated. He may not want me to tell the year, so I'll keep it to myself. But <laughs> I have not seen him since then. Oh my goodness. It's oh, been maybe someday. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good guy. Good he guy. Really Just, he, married, he hit the gold mine for real when he married you just <laughs> and I did him. yeah yeah he's a, he's a good person um well if you don't have anything else you have any other surprises you know no, no. <laughs> to make this into the place to get the tea we can go ahead and you know if you got anything else you want to share <laughs> I feel so special thank you for sharing it with all of us myself and everybody who's watching you got people I'm so watching. excited <laughs> I'm so excited I mean this is what it's all about you know these yeah. moments so yes and you know what? When we go through what we go through, these moments mean even more than people could ever possibly mm -hmm. imagine. Mm -hmm. It's like just taking in. I'll never forget the night before I had my um, double mastectomy. I just laid my grandson on my chest because it was just a significant moment. Like I was releasing. So I was getting ready to have something taken away from me that I had no control over. And they were meant to nurse. You know, you just start thinking yes. about these things and he was a baby and I was just laid in there and I just cried because you really take every, it's like nothing's taken for granted anymore. And if we try to take something for granted or try to move a little, you know, sometimes we get a little nervous or whatever, we, we pull back and we're like, okay, nope, life is too short. Yeah. Take one second at a time. All so, right. yeah. Well, thank you for sharing your story, but we got to talk about First, let's see, what is, what was the song that you chose and why did you choose it? Oh, it was Josh Groban, uh, You Raised Me Up because 
I mean, and going through any of this, like you said, I mean, I have an army of people, just an army of people supporting and and God. And um, that song was so important. Like when I was going through chemo and it, I would just play it in my head and it just got me through some times and think about all the people. Yeah. And, and yeah, <laughs> that's it. It's, yeah, it's, um, it, music is... um music can make us think and it really can heal us yes yes it really can heal us and I think um that's why I love to hear like when people pick their song the reason why I had one person pick a song and they're like it's just funny and you know it's just to hear different <laughs> personalities and their why yeah and yeah when I listen and I always go back whether it's a song that I've heard before or not and just listen to the words and try to imagine like why did they pick that song right um leading up to the interview and when I, as soon as I heard it, cause I had forgotten, I had forgotten about that song. I had heard it years ago. <laughs> and when I started playing it, I was like, oh, that fits her all day long. Like I could <laughs> envision you just listening to the song. So yeah, that's awesome. So um, your word, your one word that you could leave with the audience that could speak to someone who may have scars and that they look at them every day and they're still very much prevalent because we look at our chest every day, um, but not just those scars. Maybe they've healed from, you know, it doesn't bother them as much, but maybe they have mental scars that have, you know, through the treatment and through just finding out that they had cancer, or maybe they have fresh wounds, you know, the ones that, you know, come upon us that we weren't even expecting. What's a word that you can help a person who is going through with mental and physical scars or fresh wounds something that's significant to you or that you just want to share and why i mean i'm gonna go back to the joy because it, it's easy to get pulled down into the darkness and everything but you if you look hard enough you can find something to be joyful about um something to be thankful for and and that's what's going to get you through awesome so it's interesting you're wearing those earrings because <laughs> what I want to share with you as I'm listening to you speak because sometimes God will give me a word like before the interview during but you hear lately it's been like during the interview as people talk but <laughs> let him have his way okay God um and when I look at you it's like wow, you're a very humble person, very humble. You're very sweet, just a beautiful person, beautiful soul. And I'm not just saying that because I've talked to you off this camera. I've talked to you personally before and you're just, the, you're, you're the same every time that I talk to you. There's no difference in who you are. There's no swaying you one way or another. However, I do see a transformation in you. I see that you're going to a different, um, you're transforming. You're, you're blossoming in certain areas. And I think that with that, we're going to hear more from you. <laughs> in what way? I don't know. Is Ooh, it just I through art? Maybe, but it may be <laughs> voice. It may be through your voice or through writing. But I really believe that you're going through a transformation. And I just want to leave you with the fact of just allow God to do whatever God needs to do through you and in you as you always have. Amen. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for coming on. And for all of those wonderful people out there watching, because you have people watching. Um, <laughs> but I just want to make for sure that um, everyone know, thank you again for whomever's watching, for coming on and listening to another episode of Our Scars Speak. This concludes another one. We're so thankful that Vanessa could be here today. But also remember that our scars, our mental and our physical scars, they speak a story. Everyone has a story of the pain that they've gone through, the things that you've gone through. Those scars didn't just happen for no reason. They are there for you to help someone else. Now, when you're supposed to help that person, we do not know and we're not pressuring you to do so. But just know that those scars, those mental and physical scars are there to help build someone else up as they go through healing from their wounds or even scars that have been reopened that they need replenished and they need healed. So remember your story is something that needs to be shared and don't be afraid to do so. 
Thank you all so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye.